Welcome back to BackFit Pro headquarters. Thanks again to those of you who sent in questions for our Q&A session with Professor McGill. Today's topic will be addressing those questions around the McGill Big 3 exercises. We had a lot of questions on McGill Big 3 progressions, considering other exercises to add to their spinal hygiene routine, and the few people that are performing the McGill 3 exercises religiously but are still experiencing pain. So let's have your thoughts on those questions. I get the perception sometimes that people think BackFit Pro really is the big three exercises, but there's so much more. Uh, for example, the first order of business with anyone in pain is to get rid of the cause. But in order to know what the cause is, that requires an assessment. So that's why we uh, go through uh, a very thorough uh, assessment. Uh, identification of the training goals. The age of the person matters because that affects adaptation and healing rates. Knowing a person's tipping point, where if they work below the tipping point for that particular uh, uh, back pain mechanism, uh, that addresses a positive building of their back, whereas crossing the tipping point tears it down and uh, take them closer to their pain. So there's all sorts of uh, variables to think about here. But the big three came from experimentation, converging on the very best exercises to address mechanisms of pain. So I'm just going to take one example here of classic spine instability. Uh, this disc here has lost a little bit of joint stiffness through injury. It's a little bit flatter and there might be a bit of a disc bulge. This disc is normal and this disc is normal. Just observe as the person twists, do you see how the majority of the movement takes place at the joint that has lost its stiffness? The typical pattern of that type of pain is a pain that migrates. For the first little while, it may be down the right-hand side of their back. Uh, they shift posture or do a different activity and the pain shifts a little bit into their left buttock perhaps. Nonetheless, the big three exercises were shown to train the front, the sides, and the back to efficiently form a guy wire system that stiffens out those micro, <coughs> excuse me, those micro movements that uh, are triggering pain. Uh, another uh, example is we live in a linkage and we have to move the linkage. A law of the linkage is proximal stiffness unleashes or allows distal athleticism. So if I wanted to wiggle my finger, I had to stiffen more proximal, which is the wrist. If I want to create an effective push, I do that by involving my bench press muscle or pec major, which distal to the ball and socket joint flexes my arm to create the push. However, proximally, it bends my rib cage towards the shoulder joint. That's not a very effective push. In fact, it's a collapse. It required proximal stiffness from the torso and the spine to unleash that distal athleticism. So it's required for running and cutting uh, and general performance enhancement, but also pain control for those who are triggered by uh, stress on a particular part. So that leads us to the next element, which is posture and movement migrate stress from one uh, part of the body uh, to another. So let's uh, take an example where uh, someone reaching forward now, that triggers their pain. But instead of uh, just doing the big three and thinking that's going to take their pain away, adding proximal stiffness with the big three and then coordinating that with hip movement uh, to get out of the chair, for example, that person may need to spread their, their legs apart, lift the chest, which is now unleashed by some more freedom in the hips. They lean forward and pull the hips through. So to teach them a typical short stop squat style of bending, leaning tower, pushing off a little bit and then pulling the hips through eliminated the stress concentrations that were causing or triggering their back pain and they moved the stress to their hips. So that was a combination of a movement sequence together with uh, proximal stiffness. 
So let's talk about goals for uh, just a moment. Uh, the start of a program for someone in pain should always have the objective to eliminate pain. That's their goal. So I've given some examples of how the big three strategically address certain pain-causing mechanisms. But when they build some resilience and the pain is reducing, they should be shifting their goal from pain control and management through to now enhancing performance, either to get back to work or enjoying life as it's meant to be enjoyed. So that requires a different set of goals now. So it will require a different set of tools, a progression on the uh, big three, which we can discuss uh, uh, now. Uh, let's take a simple deadlift uh, example. There are some people who show up and they say, well, my deadlift uh, still causes me pain. I'm just deadlifting 40 pounds or 20 kilos. And I'll say, show me your deadlift. And they pick up the bar right away with an over under grip. And I say, wait a second. The very best way to minimize the stress concentration on the spine is a double overhand grip. So you don't have asymmetry running down the spine and now post or pull down and start to bend the bar. And then all of a sudden they'll say, oh, that eliminated my pain trigger. But that was a technique that comes from not having sufficient grip strength when you're lifting close to your, your, your maximum lift. So again, it was a technique, but addressing grip strength as an example to go along with the big three will unleash both performance uh, and uh, pain-free resilience in, in an example like that. So um, I, it, my, my last line of logic here is where doing the big three causes specific types of pain. Uh, consider a person, say they're a little bit older or they've had some shoulder injury or rotator cuff inju in, uh, injury. They uh, perform a side plank and they say, ah, oh, but it makes my shoulder worse. All right, now we have to be creative. We can't cause other pain. So we might set up a side plank surrogate on a 45 degree bench, hook the feet in under the foot plate and lean laterally and hold that position. It's not as good as a side plank, which integrates latissimus dorsi along with quadratus lumborum and the obliques and all of that mechanism that creates frontal plane stiffness and engineers out the micro movements as we discussed, but it is not triggering a new pain, which is shoulder pain. So these are all examples with the big three on how understanding their role and then programming them in, inside a total program gets you closer to the goals of first reducing pain and then enhancing performance. Okay, Professor Dow, let's sharpen our pencils and get down to the point here because we have many people successfully rehab their back following the principles in back mechanic with the spine hygiene and the McGill Big Three. But there are a few that wrote in as well in the question box that said they've been performing the McGill Big Three religiously, but they still have tweaks of pain in their low back. So is there something that they could look out for in the way they're performing their exercises or living their life outside of those exercises that could um, they could take home from this video to help? Yes, well, we know that I can't give a singular answer for the full breadth of all of the back pain categories. But it reminds me of a patient that we saw not too long ago who came in with an extension trigger. So when we assess them sitting in a chair and we ask them to pull up uh, 10 kilos per arm on the seat pan or uh, 20 pounds per arm, that doesn't cause pain. And then we say, become chest proud, move into an extension posture. And they say, oh yeah, that, that triggers my pain. And then when I saw them do the bird dog, they extended their legs so much and their arm raised so much, they pushed their back mm. into the pain mechanism, not realizing. So a coaching cue of dragging the foot along the ground and pushing the heel away, but not raising the leg, eliminated it. And then all of a sudden, the big three became therapeutic rather than the pain generator. Right, that makes sense. Thank you for those thoughts. And hopefully they benefit some of you at home as well. And we will see you for the next video in this Q&A series. Thank you.